Ever since I posted my video on wheel spacers, I've noticed a lot of confusion regarding wheel offset. Many people confuse it with backspacing, and today we're going to talk about the difference. Hello everyone, I'm Hubert Mace, and this is Suspensions Explained. There are two primary ways to define where the mounting face of a wheel is located, offset and backspacing. It's important to know where the mounting face of a wheel is because we need to know where the tire will end up relative to the suspension and fenders. I explained this in my video on wheel spacers, which, if you haven't seen it, you can watch here. Let's talk about the difference between offset and backspacing, and then we'll talk about how we use them both. Offset is the distance from the mounting face of the wheel to the wheel center. Imagine a plane going right down the center of the wheel. Offset is the distance from that plane to the mounting face of the wheel. It's not something you can easily measure on a wheel, but in many cases it is still quite easy to figure out. All you have to do is turn the wheel over and look on the inside of the spokes. Most aluminum wheels will have the offset cast into them. Here on this Volkswagen wheel, you can see where the size is cast in along with the number after the letters ET. In this case, it is 41. And that is the offset of this wheel. You can also see the wheel size cast in here. It says 8J by 18. The 8J means that the wheel is 8 inches wide, and the 18 means it has a diameter of 18 inches. Different manufacturers have different ways of showing it. Look for the wheel size, and the offset will likely be close by, and will usually be a number between 30 and 60. Backspacing, on the other hand, is the distance from the inner flange of the wheel to the mounting face, and I am not aware of any manufacturer that casts this number into the wheel, so you will have to measure it yourself. Fortunately, that is easy to do. Put the wheel flat on the ground with its outside face down. Lay a straight edge across the flanges of the, the wheel, and measure from there to the mounting face of the wheel. For this particular wheel, it is 152 millimeters. Now that we know how to find the offset and backspacing of the wheel, we need to talk about what they really mean, and to do that, it is easiest to look at them in the computer. This is a fictitious 8-inch wide wheel. It's just something I drew up and doesn't represent any real wheel out there. So let's cut a section through it so we can measure the offset and the backspacing. We can now clearly see the wheel center and measure the distance to the mounting face. This is the offset, and in this case it is 50 millimeters. We can also measure the distance to the inner flange, which is 170 mils here. Now let's look at another wheel that is 2 inches wider, but has the same offset. You see that the offset is still 50 millimeters, but now the backspacing has grown to 196 millimeters. Okay, but what if we wanted the same backspacing, but still wanted the wider wheel? we would end up with something like this. The backspacing is still 170 millimeters, just like it was on the 8-inch wheel, but now the offset has been reduced to 25 millimeters. The reason for this is that since offset is measured to the wheel center, it is not affected by the wheel width, whereas since backspacing is measured to the inner flange, it is affected by the wheel width. So how do we deal with this when putting wheels on our car? Let's go back to the 8-inch wide wheel we had at the beginning, and let's assume it is mounted on a car with a McPherson strut suspension. The damper in the car would be placed right next to the wheel and might look something like this. Notice how close the wheel is to the damper body. This is very typical. Now let's remove the 8 inch wheel and install the 10 inch wheel that has the same offset. Oh dear, you can see we have a problem and this wheel would clearly not fit. Okay, now let's install the wider wheel that has the same backspacing. That's better. We've solved our problem with the damper, but have we created any other problems? Let's look again at our section through the wheel to find out. We'll start by going back to the original 8-inch wheel and add the bearing. Notice how the center of the wheel falls nicely between the two ball bearing races in the bearing. This is important because the center line of the wheel represents the place where the forces coming from the tire are concentrated, and the bearing is designed to best handle these loads when they fall between the bearing races. If we now put the wider wheel on that had the same backspacing, 
we see now that the wheel center falls outside of the bearing. This changes the way the bearing is loaded by the forces coming from the tire, which can have a detrimental impact on bearing life and durability. The other impact is that the outside face of the wheel, and therefore the tire, has moved quite a ways outboard. Imagine if the fender was designed to be close to the outside edge of the 8-inch wheel and tire for a nice flush look. The wider wheel might push the outside edge of its tire beyond the fender lip, and you could risk the tire hitting the fender on a bump, or you would have to flare the fender to keep it out of the way. So now you know the difference between wheel offset and backspacing, and why we need to understand both when deciding what wheels to put on our car. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and hit notifications, and we'll see you next time for another Suspensions Explained.